I'll walk back to the channel. And in the last video, I told you I was uh, I was getting rid of my GS, my 1250 GS, which I'd had for just over two years. I had done nearly 20,000 miles. And I asked you to have a guess what I was going to be swapping it for. So in this video, I'm going to show you my new bike. And uh, there were some interesting guesses in the comments for that video. KTM, Ducati, other types of BMW, somebody said an RT. I quite like the RT, but I did really love my GS. So really, there was only one choice, really. <laughs> and I did say in that video, it should be relatively easy to guess what I was getting. And of course, I've got another GS! <laughs> To be precise, I've upgraded my previous GS a little bit and I've got a brand new BMW R1250 GS Adventure. This is in rally trim and it's TE spec. I'll talk you through what that means in a minute. But yeah, I thought for a while about maybe changing manufacturer quite like the look of the new uh, Triumph Tiger 1200 and that's getting some really good reviews at the moment really like the Ducati Multistrada V4 or V4S but I wasn't sure about going back to chain drive and all that faffing with the chain really like the shaft drive on the GS and actually that last GS of mine was pretty much every bike you could ever need I'm familiar with it comfortable on it remember for me a bike is uh, or well, this main bike of mine is a workhorse I've got a few other bikes to play about on but this is my workhorse I don't have a car anymore it's my main commuting tool I do coaching on it at weekends and examining, I go touring on it. It does a lot of miles and I want something that, uh, that I'm familiar with. It's reliable. It does everything I want it to do. And, and I couldn't really get away from the fact that, <laughs> that that last GS of mine was not perfect. As I said to say perfect, because there are some minor issues with it, but really all the bike I ever needed for what I wanted to do. So for those of you not familiar with BMW's GS range, the main difference between the 1250GS and the GS Adventure is this one has a bigger fuel tank. So the GS has a 20 litre fuel tank, the GS Adventure or the GSA has a 30 litre fuel tank. And obviously, especially if you're going touring, there's a real advantage not to have to stop as often for fuel really covers some miles on this bike but alongside the improved range and the bigger fuel tank a bit nicer there this is um, well it's registered in 2023 so 2022 GS Adventure so it's got all the upgrades that the more recent GS's have got improvements to the software it's got more riding modes number of other little minor improvements over the previous bike. So let me tell you about this particular bike, my GSA. As I said, it's uh, an R1250 GS Adventure Rally TE spec. TE spec brings quite a lot of little bells and whistles to the bike over a standard GSA. So for example it has heated grips, this one doesn't have a heated seat but it's got heated grips. It's got cruise control. It's got all the rider modes. Uh, which it, it, on this newer version of the GS and the GSA includes an eco mode. 
quite sure I'll be using that very much but you know if you're touring and you feel like it's getting low and you don't know where the next petrol station is there's an advantage to having an eco mode isn't it? but it's got eco rain it's got a road mode it's got dynamic dynamic pro enduro and enduro pro and I think in a future video I'll probably go through those rider modes and just show you what a difference they make to ride in the back because they do make a significant difference definitely make a difference to how it feels and how it responds um, TE spec as well brings uh, what they call dynamic ESA electronically adjustable suspension and that means you can adjust the preload pre electronically with the switch on the handlebars just the damper preload while the bike's stationary but it has an automatic setting as well that sort of measures the weight on the bike decides what preload to put on it and I tend to stick with that automatic mode you can also adjust the damper settings the stiffness of the dampers between two settings road and dynamic and actually that does make a significant difference to how the bike feels road sucks up all the bumps compressions whereas um, the dynamic setting is much stiffer gives you a better response but a firmer ride uh, TE spec as well brings uh, what BMW call gear shift assist pro I've talked about this before it's the same spec really as my previous GS uh, but that's BMW's quick shifter so you can do clutchless gear changes a bit like last time, it's pretty stiff at the moment on this bike, but I do know that they bed in and work a lot better once they've done a few thousand miles. At the moment I've done 377 miles on this bike. The bike's got 381 miles on the clock, it had 4 miles on it when I picked it up. So I haven't even done 400 miles on it yet. It's only on its second tank of fuel. <laughs> so what are my first impressions? Well, as you might have guessed, it is a very similar place to be to the GS when you look at a GS next to a GSA the adventure does look a bigger bike it looks heftier fatter in the tank area it is a bigger bike but actually once you're up and running on it just like the GS it's light as a feather uh, I didn't know whether it would make filtering any more difficult but it doesn't, it certainly hasn't done to me whether that's because I was over cautious on the GS, I don't think I was with the gaps that I went for but it's certainly, um, it's certainly wheeled it off and, and you know on my commute certainly filtering on stationary motorway traffic up to traffic lights this bike is fine the pannier racks on it at the moment which I think I might take off I'm not quite sure I like the look of the pannier racks on it I don't use panniers They're very limiting I think when it comes to filtering and things like that but yeah very similar place to sit it does have a slightly different feel to my previous GS now whether this is just a bit of the halo of a new bike but I noticed immediately when I got it it just felt a little bit more I was going to say stable, I'm not sure if stable is the right word because the previous GS was a very stable bike but this, this just f seems to maybe it's yeah, that extra bit of weight or could be the tyres actually this bike's running Mitchell in Anarchy Adventure tyres not a tyre I'm familiar with, I've never ridden on these tyres before but I suspect that those tyres just have a very slightly slower response to the Mitchell Road 6s that I was used to on the previous GS so the Anarchy Adventure is it's what they call an 80-20 tyre so it does allow some off-road use whereas the Road 6 that I'm most used to is just purely 100% road tyre this Anarchy Adventure 80% road tyre, 20% off-road use and I've got an idea for a bit of easy off-road riding that I'm going to do in the next month or two as you probably know it's not my thing off-road riding but I've got a little route I'm going to try in the next month or two I will give these Anarchy Adventure tyres a bit of a a bit of a try off-road on some gravel and stuff and see what we think 
yeah the response of the bike it's not it's not slower maybe it is a little bit slits a bit really trying to find struggling to find the words for this this is why i'd never be a <laughs> never be a motorcycle journalist let's just say it flows a little bit better than the gs and I'm prepared to put that down to the tyres, I'm prepared to put it down to new bike halo, but I into that corner then, it just felt really easy and it just wants to go where you want it to go, there's no uncertainty about it it's a very good road bike this you know, set all that adventure stuff aside and all that off-roading and around the world with Charlie and you and all that kind of, set that to one side this is a really good road bike and the other thing I've noticed with this bike is, you know the engine is exactly the same as the one in my previous bike. It's the same engine, the same gearbox. It's a horizontally opposed 1250cc. It's got BMW's variable cam timing system. And it's every bit as good as it was in the last bike, but actually it, it feels a bit perky. Now, I have to, this comes with a caveat as well. The bike isn't running yet. It goes in for a running in service about thousand kilometers so what's that 620 miles it goes in so we're more than halfway towards its running in service and before that the advice is don't take it over 5,000 revs don't use the dynamic settings on the rider modes and don't use full throttle so I'm being pretty easy on the bike at the moment keeping those revs low I mean keeping it below 5,000 that's easy on a GS that's where it lives most of its life but I have to say, the bike just feels a bit perkier than the previous one. Than my previous GS. Now that might be a shortcoming on my previous bike. Could be that my GS wasn't quite performing at its best, I don't know. Or it could be that with all the changes to the software and the mapping, that they've given this bike just a little bit of, bit of extra bite at the lower revs. It just feels perkier. It feels more eager to go. You know, it's a bit heavier than the GS, obviously. It's bigger. Bigger tank, more fuel in it. But despite that, it just feels a bit, a little bit livelier. Now, I think, obviously, I'm saying that having stepped directly off the previous GS onto this. I've not got used to it yet. Still learning my way around the bike. But I think it's a direct comparison, and I think it's fair. Uh, one or two other things that are new on this bike, so the headlight system on this, and I think this is part of the TE spec, or it's one of the one of the options that were ticked by Bowkers when they ordered it, because this bike was in stock, I didn't spec it myself. Um, it's got a much improved headlight on it. It's got like an adaptive headlamp. It does some really clever stuff. I've not ridden the bike at night yet, I'm gonna ride it, probably ride it home tonight in the dark. So we'll see what that's like, but apparently it, um, you know, it moves the position of the beam. Gives you a better view around corners, and BMW's LED headlights are really fantastic. Um, it's got the two fog lights on it, never, can never quite make my mind up about fog lights. Front fog lights on a car, in my view, are useless, they don't do anything. They don't add anything to your visibility, and they don't really make you more visible on the bike well, I'm not so sure um, I wanted to make sure they weren't dazzling people so I've made sure the beams aimed down a little bit and I've put some yellow film on the fog lights themselves which I think gets people's attention on the bike it's not really about improving your view down the road it's about making yourself more visible the more visible you are the better and I think having I think those yellowed out fog lamps, I am reserving judgement at the moment. Um, I prefer that yellow look to the fog lights than just a white one. But I might change my mind. One other issue with the lights on this bike though, that BMW did an upgrade a couple of years ago on all the GSs. Um, and I, I don't really consider it to be an upgrade to be honest. Uh, but they fitted these multi-function indicators I think they call them. So your indicators double up as a side light or a daytime running light or whatever you want to call it. You can't switch them off. 
but the daytime running light element is yellow and it is exactly the same yellow as your indicators I'm not impressed actually to be honest it really is a backward step as far as I'm concerned um, and I have noticed in the very short time I've had this bike that I've had an increased number of people pulling out at me at junctions especially when we're going slowly and I genuinely believe that these um, these indicators these side lights are confusing people they look like an indicator and that worries me and I have found a solution to it I'm gonna swap them out so I'll put that in another video and show you what my solution is to that the other thing I'm, I'm not quite settled into yet are these foot pegs it has um, so the GS Adventure has enduro foot pegs which I am absolutely certain will be awesome off-road because they've got these really sharp teeth that dig into your boots and just hold you in position there's no slipping off these the problem comes when on the road you're moving your foot forward to either brake or more importantly change gear I'm trying to get trying to hook you're changing up trying to hook your toe under that gear stick under that gear lever <laughs> when these sort of bare claw enduro grips have got a grip on your foot is uh, is a bit difficult really um, so I'm looking for some rubber inserts for those you can get rubber inserts um, as I said before most of my riding is on the road you can take the inserts out if you go riding off-road so what else with this bike well I bought it a few presents of course uh, I've transferred the the big top box across from the previous GS a 58 litre Givy Trekker Outback top box really useful piece of kit that sits nicely on the back of this bike transferred the fittings and fixtures for my tank bag I've put some bigger sort of hand protectors on these plastic inner parts here just to keep the wind off the back of my hands in winter combine them with the heating grips it's really good I've got one or two other presents I'm going to buy for it because you do don't you it's a new bike you buy presents for your new bike don't you so that's it for this video. I will do a more comprehensive review of this bike. These are just my first impressions. Um, you know, I'll have you guessing after the last video what my new bike is, so I wanted to show you. Show off my new bike. The new bike's always exciting, isn't it? But yeah, in a future video I'll do a full review once, but maybe once I've done a couple of thousand miles on the bike and it's running and I've got to know it a little bit better. And I can give you a better review of these anarchy tyres which at the moment in these horrible greasy wet winter conditions we get in the UK it's um, they're pretty good tyres and I'll try and give you regular updates on how I'm getting on with the bike as well but for now thanks for watching let me know what you think if you've got one of these give me your thoughts in the comments below if you hate it let me know <laughs> I'm sure you will first impressions for me are really good I'm enjoying it but I'll share the ownership experience with you. So just before I go, don't forget to uh, give us a subscribe on the channel. It helps the channel. It's growing nicely at the moment. I'm going to have a look at the website, reslocal.com. Loads more information there about advanced and performance driving and riding. Information about the books that I've written. And how you can get a day's driver or rider coaching with me if you fancy a day out. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.